Monday Night Raw may not be nearly as red hot as Seth Rollins, but we know that SmackDown this week definitely warmed our cockles. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. Uh, yeah, we had uh, much more fun with, uh, with SmackDown and 205 Live, I think, than we did with Monday Night Raw last night. Uh, so let's talk about what happened. We have another Miz TV. Miz trying to figure out which member of the New Day was going to be in Money in the Bank. And they all kept the, kind of... Yeah, in typical Miz fashion, he was just kind of trying to get them all to, like, pick themselves to create infighting. Instead, they all kind of picked each other. Yeah. And were like, yeah, I mean... We're being very supportive. Yeah. Uh, and, and then he opened his big mouth and said, well, I could be any member of the New Day on any day of the week. And Paige is like, all Perfect. right. And he did, actually. It was with the help of uh, distraction by the bar as they were beating up Kofi and Xavier Woods on the outside. Uh, But The Miz did, in fact, beat Big E. And now next week we will have a six-man tag team match. Uh, We also had, surprisingly, Lana defeated Billy Kay to qualify for Money in the Bank. Yeah, in like 30 seconds. Yeah, didn't see that coming. But okay, we'll go with that. Andrade San Almas defeated a jobber. Uh, Carmella says she's twice as good as Asuka because she's beat Charlotte twice. Uh, That's some Scott Steiner math right there. It makes more sense than Scott Steiner math. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, after def- uh, beating the hell out of AJ Styles on the outside, announced that the match will in fact be a last man standing match at Money in the Bank. The Good Brothers defeated the Usos. They will now face the Bludgeon Brothers at Money in the Bank for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Naomi defeated Sonya Deville, and she has taken the seventh spot in the women's Money in the Bank. The last spot will be determined in the gauntlet match next week on Raw. And in the main event, Daniel Bryan, awesome, won a chance to face Samoa Joe by defeating Jeff Hardy. And yeah, he will face Samoa Joe next week to determine a uh, the second to last, I believe, uh, spot in the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. So, I think it's the final. Is it? I think so. I have to check, them, check my predictions. Don't remember. Um, and then on 205 Live, we had Drew Gulak uh, with some fantastic commentary from Jack Gallagher and Brian Kendrick yeah. defeating Grand Metalik of Lucha House Party. Uh, he now only has to defeat Lince Dorado to make it a, uh, a, 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 hat a, trick. Th- a threefer? A hat trick? Whatever you want to call Trifecta. it. TJP defeated Christopher Guy de Coronado. And then said that apparently Drake Maverick doesn't appreciate him because he keeps giving him jobbers. That's the Chikar Grand Champion, sir. Uh, Cedric Alexander had an interview. <laughs> just, I, just go back to the sentence. It just sounds terribly awkward. Just make sure that he doesn't think that Drake Maverick likes him because he keeps giving him jobbers. I'm like, oh, that's Oh, nice. oh, my bad. Didn't was he, was he giving him jobbers? Was not, what kind of jobbers is he giving was him? was not aware of the context that I created <laughs> with that statement. That was weird uh, yeah. in my head. That's all right. Moving uh, on. I don't Cedric- want to think about Drake Maverick giving TJP jobbers. Well, now it's stuck in your head forever. Yeah. Uh, Cedric Alexander had an interview with Vic Joseph talking about his title defense next week against Buddy Murphy. We, we also had a video of Buddy Murphy talking about how he's going to be the next Cruiserweight champion. And then in the main event, Hideo Itami defeated Akira Tozawa in the grudge match. The Japanese grudge match. Uh, what'd you like about uh, Tuesday Night Live? Aiden English introducing Lana. I mean, Aiden English, man, he's got some and of... And with the sign. Yeah, oh, yeah. The, Not yeah. only is he a good singer, but he's a good arts and craftser. <laughs> he made a Lana Day sign. And, yeah, no, that whole segment was so much fun. Like, surprising, and it doesn't necessarily hurt Billy Kay or Peyton Royce. It's just... It was just a fun segment. Everyone, everyone kind of had a great moment in that in that segment. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, here's my curiosity: It's like, did WWE get cold feet on breaking up Rusev Day? Because yes. they had that like two weeks ago. Lana came in and was like, "Hey, I think he might be holding you back." And like the next week, she comes in and she seems like, "Oh, oh yeah." No, I don't know about it in English. I, I think I think the idea of that, the fact that people love Rusev Day as a group, it is, it, you know, it, it's one of those things. It's like, is with social media, the fact that you know people get just a little bit of taste of what they think is going to happen, 
and then you have so many people voicing their opinion. Yeah. You know, you really, I think, I think creative really got an idea of how much people actually appreciate Rusev Day as a group and or a tag team, however you want to view them. Uh, and yeah, quickly, quickly put the squash on the Lana trying to get rid of Aiden English bit. Yeah, and it's it's kind of a cool idea because I I like if you, if you look at it as like. Fans going like, oh, we really like Rusev and Aiden English together, and we really like Rusev and Lana together, rather than trying to make us us have to accept one or the other, why not try and combine all three of them into yeah. one group? Yeah, no, it's it's a, a ravishing Rusev yeah, day. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great... It's Ravisi, a, it, ravishing Rick Rusev day. When they get Victor from the Ascension over there. Ah, uh, Rick Victor, okay. To say they're not going to bring back Rick Rude. That's not going to happen. Rick Steiner. Uh, that's okay. Rick He's Steamboat. Yeah, but Rick Flair. Uh, woo woo. Uh, I really liked the uh, sh- the way Shinsuke announced the Last Man Standing match. Uh, I thought the the set. This was one of Shinsuke's best promos. Yeah. Because he just got to talk so much shit and it was just annoying the hell out of AJ. And then they got they got real. I was brawl- really disappointed when they revealed that it wasn't actually going to be a pillow fight. Uh, you were really, you were really looking forward to that pillow fight, huh? Mm-hmm. I think AJ was too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so was most of Worcester, Mass. <laughs> uh, no, it was, it, it was good. Like, once they started started getting all all brawly with it, with each other, and then and then Shinsuke starting to do the count, you know, just kind of throwing out the little tease there, and then officially announcing it. Um, I think it's a good it's a good choice of a stipulation. I think it. Yeah. I think it. It. The, this is this is definitely a feud that warrants someone being more dominant than the other or one person hitting more low blows on the other. I don't know. Depends on how that's going to go. We'll find out at Money in the Bank. What did you love? Mm. <sighs> Drew Gulak. You always love Drew Gulak. Always Drew Gulak. Um, you know what? I'm going to go with I love the fact that I got surprised. Which doesn't happen very often on uh, WWE television. Okay. Double WWE. Thank you, Kurt. You're welcome. Uh, the club beating the Usos. Yeah. Wow. There, there were there were two very surprising wins on SmackDown. Yeah, I, I think I was legitimately more surprised by this than I was by Lana beating oh, okay. okay. That's fair. Like, leg- I mean, I was surprised with Lana winning. I mean, I was surprised when. The club, or I think it was Gallows, kicked out of the the Uso Superfly Splash, like two yeah. super kicks and a Superfly Splash, and he kicked out. And I was like, "Oh, okay, the club's got a little bit more fight." But yeah, then to actually have them beat, essentially one of the best tag teams, yeah, going today. I just, I just wish there was like a, a on screen rationale because this is a thing that WWE seems to do a lot is. They have a character or a team that is essentially used as glorified enhancement talent. Right. And then all of a sudden they can just start stringing up a bunch of wins. I think I think they've done it well with the B team on Raw, where they just... I, I, th- I think what it is, I think WWE implies it so often that it's just... It's the focus. It's like the B team... Realize, okay, we're not with the Miz anymore. We don't need anybody else. It's just us. We are the B team, and that's what they focus on getting the win. And I think with, I think with the club, is more so like we've been seeing them getting more serious in the gym. They've been, you know, they've been, you know, actually like working on themselves more lately. So I think that might be the implication. They just don't really put that on TV. It's essentially WWE, uh, really. Relying on social media, yeah. as the hey, see 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 what this this team is bettering themselves. They're you know, now they can beat the best tag team on the roster. Doesn't necessarily make all the sense, but no, I think that's I mean, the if, sense if, they're trying to go for. You would have given it. them one other win prior to this. Yeah, have them beat the New Day. Have them beat a jobber tag team. Have them beat anything. Yeah. Rather than just immediately go, okay, well, here's their first, like, official outing on SmackDown since the draft, or the flip-flop, 
superstar flip flop, uh, and let's have them beat the most dominant tag, essentially the most dominant tag team of the last like three years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, beast. You after losing consecutively to everybody on Monday Night Raw, well, that, then that's all of what a sudden, it is. They're on SmackDown. SmackDown's different. Yeah, and then that that makes me think all of a sudden, wow. Like a team that loses to everybody on Monday Night Raw can come and beat the best team on SmackDown. Makes you worry for SmackDown a yeah. little bit. Uh, speaking of tag teams, I very much enjoyed the entire New Day Miz situation from Miz TV to Paige telling Miz to go back out to ringside to the match itself. Kofi Kingston launching himself off of Cesaro's shoulder that was to really attack cool. Sheamus was fantastic. Yeah, that the whole beginning of SmackDown was a lot of fun, a great match, some fantastic action on the outside, some great commentary from both Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston. Yeah, it was just it was a lot of fun. It was a good way to kick off SmackDown, and then SmackDown kept kept being good. So that's I appreciate a good start to a show. Did you dislike anything? Um, other than TJP. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you can choose TJP if you want, but um, no, I'm I'm not gonna give him the time of day. All right, uh, Carmella. Yeah, I'm I'm just still not not giving a I, shit. I'm, I'm still waiting for something to happen. Like, I I there's little tiny sparkles. That are like a glimpse that there could be something great just over the horizon. But then every time there's a little twinkle of hope, you have to wade through like three weeks of garbage. What, what, is, it, what is the most recent twinkle of Carmella that has just kind of gone by the wayside? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> It's it's been a while. It's so muddled you don't even know. Yeah, it it's just you know, like it's just it random like one sequence of moves or one line in a promo that kind of stands out as not the cheesy, goofy ditzy Carmella that yeah. seems to run all these promos where you know half the time she talks so fast you can't understand what she's saying. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I, I get that. Well, I talked about it last week when you weren't here, is that, you know, I, I felt like Carmella had a good moment with her cash-in, but then hasn't upped herself at all since that moment. Well, that's the thing, is I think she needed to have upped herself before becoming champion. Right. And because... She's not anywhere near what I would say a championship caliber level. We're going to be getting a very, very lackluster run from somebody who did something as important as cashing in the money in the bank on Charlotte Flair, who just beat Asuka. That's fair. Um, I think it, I didn't really dislike anything I could have done with... I'm I'm not a fan of the, you know, the second chance qualifier matches, and the fact that we had two of them this week was a little annoying. I mean, it wasn't a second chance for Naomi, but it was Sonya's second chance, <laughs> and then the second chance for both Jeff and Daniel. Yeah, I could have done without that, but that's. Well, it's a, I think it's just because they didn't have anyone else to put Naomi against. That's yeah, and that's probably yeah, that's probably it. But. <laughs> That's my only real real dislike about the whole show. I thought it was it was a fun night of wrestling, and I appreciate fun nights of wrestling. And I also appreciate you for watching. So Don't, thanks for oh, watching. All right. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Click the links down below. There are so many social media links. You can also check out our podcast link. It's what it says, uh, SoundCloud. <laughs> and there's Reasonable Wrestling fans. It's Reasonable with a W. Like, like wrestling. wrestling. Where you have The List with Kevin Hunt. That's me. You have Question of the Week with Thomas Wolf. That's not me. You actually have an unboxing this week with Thomas Wolf. That'll be coming out on Saturday. Weird. P potentially earlier. And there's other videos that are loosely based around wrestling. But for now, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you at whatever video. You decide to watch next. Even though neither of them are on SmackDown and or 205 Live, fuck, fuck Modus. Modus.